shiny happy people welcome to kimpa's crafts my name is kim and if you're new here hello welcome and if you're returning welcome back guys love you so much so we are here for another um day we're here on december 6th for the sixth the door on the advent canvas here so all of these doors i have done um one two three four and five so uh this when the finished painting is done, it is a painting done by Randy Woolenman, and I have linked below uh, a link to, directly to his website, as well as some links to some companies that have produced puzzles of his artwork. His paintings are fantastic. They're, they're so cute. And um, I have contacted a couple diamond painting companies asking if they would maybe reach out to him and create uh, some diamond paintings for us for the holidays, guys. Um, I have seen some of his that are not holiday paintings, but it seems like a majority of them are. Some of them are winter scenes. Um, so go ahead and check them out. If you like them as much as I do, go ahead and hit up your favorite diamond painting company, spread his name around. Let's get some of his paintings done in diamond painting form so we can all enjoy his work. Okay, so we have done one, two, three, four, and five. And those are the scenes so far. And honestly, it, it's it's gorgeous. It's so cute and fun um, from, you know, the distance that we should be looking at it. So, so far we have a little boy in a globe. Um, we have a bird feeder with two blue birds up there. We have uh, a little, uh, a child and an adult uh, sledding. And then we have a deer and we have some kind of plaque with a sled and a tree in it and a little deer here. So it's very cute so far. Um, we are gonna be diamond painting door number six. It's a rather large one. So we'll split this up into three and I'll do a three part story for you today. I'm gonna go ahead and set that up and yeah, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I cut this out and it is a big, big square. Whew, it's gonna take a long time and here it is we are doing all of this I guess there's like a little bit of color blocking I wouldn't consider it like color blocking so much as like I do the C's the same symbol repeated quite a bit but not necessarily in chunks you know what I mean okay but here is our Christmas fact Let's zoom on in on that and see what we got here. It says, you can recycle your Christmas tree by donating it to elephants. You can donate it to a zoo so it can be fed to a hungry elephant. Zoos around the world accept evergreens, which are enjoyed as a seasonal snack by the elephants. Holy mackerel. I mean, they're so big. Like, I guess an evergreen tree is like an asparagus tip to them. <laughs> oh, I'm bad with jokes, bad with jokes. Okay, but that is interesting. I'm going to see if I can find any photos of an elephant eating a tree. That should be interesting. But yeah, okay, that's good to know. So if you live near a zoo, go ahead and run over your tree and recycle that. Bring it back to the earth, guys. Okay, so since this is such a big square, we are definitely doing it in three sections. And um, I am going to, I'm trying to keep these boxes in the same order so that I'm not too confused. Um, I'm gonna tell you a three part story then. So the story that I'm going to tell you today is very dear to me. It is actually the story about like how my parents met. And yeah, it's a really sweet story. And it's definitely something that I want to like be passed on and like told through generations and generations. I've heard this story from 
both my parents. Um, but so we'll start off with my dad was um, drafted to the Vietnam War and he was in obviously the army. And um, let me see where I'm going to break this up. So like, I guess I'll go like maybe here. Does that look? I'll go here. So um, yeah, he was, he fought in the Vietnam War and he was in the army. He was pretty much a grunt like out in the fields. And um, when he was being shipped out, they asked him where he wanted to go. And my grandfather told me this part. Um, he asked to go back to Vietnam. So, you know, I know that that sounds very strange, but I guess a lot of the guys you know, felt that way at the time. And um, from my understanding, he did two tours in Vietnam. And so the army guy was like, we're not sending soldiers there, son. We're sending them home. And then he told my dad, we're blowing stuff up in Korea. Do you want to go there? And my dad said, sure. So they sent him to Korea. And I do know that he was like an MP, military police over there. And he said it was a horrible job. He hated it. He hated it. He said he had to deal with a lot of like drunk soldiers. And I think he was, hold on a second. Okay. He, he did tell me that he hated that job. Um, and he said he had to deal with a lot of drunk soldiers. And I just think he... I think a big part of it was he felt bad because, you know, most of these soldiers were um, coming from Vietnam and they were trying to learn how to deal with the emotional turmoil they had from just fighting in a horrible, horrible war. And, you know, he didn't like having to like go and pick them up and I guess arrest them if they were causing, they were being violent or whatever. So yeah, he did not like that job at all. But um, my mom at the time was living in an apartment in Seoul, Korea. And um, she was working at a clothing store. And he walked in one day and he saw her and he just thought she was absolutely lovely. And he had his little English to Korean dictionary and she, he was like trying to talk to her. <laughs> and um, yeah, he was completely smitten and he went back the next day and he asked her out on a date. And my dad was so handsome. He was so handsome. I mean, he was a really handsome guy. And so like all, my mom said all the girls in Korea were just like so taken aback by him. And um, yeah, he just, there was just something about my mom and he came back. And he kept coming in and talking to her with this dictionary. And um, yeah, they started dating. So I'm going to leave it there. And um, I'll tell you about a surprise. Someone, someone stopping my mom. I'll tell you another story when we come back. I'm going to finish the square and we'll pick up when I'm done. Enjoy the music. In the 
quiet evening snow is falling And from every window shines a light Somewhere in the distance drums are calling But no one heeds their call guys I'm done this part of the square and I'm gonna put this up here like that and this will be the second part of the square that I work on okay so back to my story so oh let me let me um Part in, okay, you can see it, right? Yes, you can see it. So, um, my parents started dating, and 
My mom came from a very, very, very remote village in the mountains. Like, they had no electricity, they didn't have running water. Um, and so when she moved out to Seoul, like, all of that was new to her. And her dad came to visit and meet my dad, her parents, her mom and dad. And they were telling us how, my dad was telling us how my um, grandfather um, spent hours in the bathroom because he had never seen um, running water or like plumbing before. And he said he just kept turning the water on and off and flushing the toilet and asking my mom where it was coming from and where it was going. <laughs> I can imagine how that looks like sorcery to someone who's never seen it before. So um, I thought that was really cute. So um, eventually my dad asked my mom to marry him. I know they did not date very long, it was only months. And my aunt told me how he did not tell them that he, when they, they, they got married um, at the U.S. Embassy in Korea. And my aunt told me how he did not tell them that he got married. My dad did not tell my family, my, my, like his parents, that, that he got married. And... Um, so when he wrote letters to them, he kept writing, I can't wait to, for you to meet my Yobo. I can't wait for you to meet my Yobo. And that's wife in Korean, in Hangul. And they just were like, she's like, we were so confused. We just kept going, Yobo, what is he talking about? <laughs> and, um... Yeah, so she said, I don't know when he actually did tell them, but I know he had to tell them. I think his plan probably was to just show up on the doorstep with her. I, honestly, that's that's so my dad. I can totally see him having that like as his idea. But that's not what happened. And honestly, that's a different story. So... um. Uh, my mom said she was walking on the sidewalk when she when when they decided to get married, and she knew she was going to be moving to America with him. And she said this older Korean lady stopped her, and grabbed her by her shoulders and looked at her and said to her, "You are going on a very long, far away journey." And my mom was just like shocked and then let her go and kept walking. So I'll never forget her telling me that story. So, um, uh, so that was then, then, and she, she told me that she, I guess like getting married at, she didn't really understand like the whole marriage process. At the just at the embassy, but she said like it was pretty disappointing. Like they just said a couple words, and then they were like, "You're married." And she said she said to my dad like when they were leaving, like that's it. Like, <laughs> um, like she she told me she didn't feel like she just got married. Like it was like so fast and like just like I guess they said a couple words, and then that was it. And so uh, she told her family that, and so they threw her a party. And um, they, and uh, that's where I'm gonna end my story. And I'll tell you the rest when I'm done this section.
verify with my mom but I believe that it was after my parents got married and her family excuse me threw her a like a, a party um they went back to her village and you know my dad met the rest of the family because he had already met her parents and um, like I said, my mom grew up in a very, very remote area in the mountains. So they took a taxi to my mom's village. And my parents were telling me, you know, when you took the taxi, it went up the village and it went up like, it went, I mean, it went up a mountain. I was on this like tiny road going up and up and up and up and up this mountain. And then at some point it stopped, the taxi stopped and my mom's two brothers were standing there waiting for them on the side of the road. And the taxi stops and you know, they greet her brothers and 
the taxi driver goes to get the luggage out. And my dad's like, wait a minute, you know, you're drop they're dropping us off here. And my mom's like, yeah. And my dad's like, well, well, how far are we from your, your village? And they tell him like two miles, that it's two miles further up the mountain. <laughs> and my dad's like, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not, we're not walking two miles. <laughs> so he makes the, the taxi driver like stop taking the luggage out and he, he makes her brothers pile into the taxi and he tells the taxi driver, you know, keep driving, like, because there was still a road. So he's like, tell him, like, you know, go, go, go. And they're telling him, no, you know, this is as far as that he he can go. And my dad's like, no, 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 we're not, we're not lug lugging luggage two miles up the road. So he makes the taxi driver go and he starts driving and he's driving and driving and then not too much further up, he gets stuck because like the road stops <laughs> and he like physically got stuck, the taxi got stuck. And so then my mom, my mom's brothers and my dad had to get out and push the taxi driver <laughs> and get it unstuck. Yeah, and they had to walk from there. <laughs> Um, but that's how far she was. Like you had to walk two miles into the village and then two miles back out. <laughs> and so they walked the rest of the way to my mom's village and they had a huge party for her, um, to celebrate her marriage and... This is another part of the story. I'm not sure. I'm not, I think it was like a three day party, but I'll have to ask her again and verify. Um, but yeah, so then my dad got to see where my mom came from and there were some pictures floating around. Um, very small little square black and white photos. Um, and there was a picture of like my mom's two sisters too. Um, and who knows, maybe one day if I actually ever find those photos, I can show everyone. But yeah, so my dad did get to see the village that she grew up in. And, um, and, uh, she never really had, you know, a, a wedding or anything. And they did just did a, a little village celebration. <laughs> so that is how my parents met. And, um, I have another story for you about them, like a little spin-off that I'll share on another square. I'm going to finish this one up, though. You guys enjoy the music.
Okay, guys, so here is the square. It's a snow globe with a, a puppy and two people caroling so far. So that is door number six. These doors are gonna be getting cut off soon. And here we have it, all the doors. I hope you enjoyed my story about how my parents met and um, yeah, so we have three over there and three over here and tomorrow come back for day seven door seven and my protein oatmeal recipe yummy all right, guys, if you like this video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up on the way out. And if you want to see more from me and watch me finish this Advent canvas, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the family and friends here at Canvas Crafts. I would love to have you. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care. Keep diamond painting.